Hello, welcome to Maths Kitchen. Today we're looking at circle theorems. Questions on circle theorems come up regularly in the higher maths GCSE exam, so it makes sense to do a bit of revision on them in preparation for that. So today I'm going to go through each of the theorems and I'll give you some questions to practice after each one. Uh, and then later on I'm going to put up a second video where I work through some GCSE exam questions to show you how I would do those as well. There are seven theorems that you need to know about, as well as some specific language and a couple of other useful bits of information. I'll start with the language before looking at the theorems, and then I'll finish off with looking at some of those useful tips for you, okay? So first up, what is a theorem? Well, a theorem is just a fact which has been proven to be true 100% of the time, so it's always going to be true. Um, and the language to do with circles, well, the first bit of language we need to be familiar with, the circumference. That's just the distance around the circle. You can see that there. Now, imagine you have two points on the circumference of a circle, like that. This highlighted part connecting those two points is an arc. So an arc is just a part of the circumference of a circle. Now, you could join those two points up like this to create what is called a chord. So a chord is just a line between two points on the circumference of the circle. And that chord splits the circle into two, and we call each of those parts segments. The final piece of language is a phrase using this word, subtend. If we go back to our points on the circumference of the circle and we take a line from each of them to create this angle on the circumference at point A, we could describe that as the angle subtended at the circumference by an arc. What does that mean? Well, subtend just means the angle created at a particular point. In this case, the particular point is on the circumference of the circle. So subtended at the circumference just means the angle that we've created on the circumference of the circle. And the last part about an arc just tells us that the angle was created by taking two lines from each end of an arc. If we put that all together then, the whole thing means the angle created on the circumference of the circle by two lines coming from either end of an arc. Right? The angle subtended by an arc. If we create an angle at the center of the circle coming from those same two points, in other words, an angle subtended at the center of the circle by the same arc, then the angle created at the center will always be double the one at the circumference. Always, okay? That's our first theorem then. The angle subtended by an arc at the center is twice the angle subtended at the circumference. That's quite a mouthful to remember, so we can simplify it to the angle at the center is double the angle at the circumference. And that is always the case. Even if we move this point around, it will always be the case. So just be aware that it may well look very different, sometimes like this arrow-shaped example, or at other times it could look like this, which actually looks completely different. But in both cases, the angle at the center is always double the angle at the circumference. Here are three questions then. Pause the video, find the missing angles, and I'll show the answers in a moment. The second theorem we'll look at follows on from the first one. We just established that it doesn't matter where that angle on the circumference is, it will always be half of the angle at the center. And you can see as I move the point around the circumference, the angle at the center isn't changing. And therefore, if the angle at the center is always twice the angle at the circumference, it must follow that the angle at the circumference isn't changing either. Just for clarity, if we show that without the angle at the center, you can see that the angle at the circumference never changes. That is as long as it stays in the same segment. In other words, on the same side of those two points. As soon as you move that angle down below the two points it, into the other segment, it changes. We say angles subtended by an arc in the same segment are equal, or put more simply, angles in the same segment are equal. All of these angles will be equal to each other because they're in the same segment. 
pause the video then, have a go at these questions and I'll be back with the answers in a few seconds. By the way, if you found this video useful, it really helps the channel to grow if you subscribe or give the video a thumbs up or share it with your friends. Um, thank you very much if you've already done one of those things. Uh, also, don't forget to have a look at my Facebook page. So that's just Maths Kitchen as well, and I post additional things up there. Right, back to the circles then. If we draw a line passing through the center of the circle, we call that the diameter. Now, if we focus on just half of that circle, a semicircle in other words, and create an angle from either end of that diameter to somewhere else on the circumference, that angle will always be a right angle, 90 degrees. And because of the second theorem we looked at, we know that if it's a right angle here, if we move that point around the circumference, it won't change. It will always be a right angle. Uh, and in fact, that links to the first theorem as well, because the angle at the circumference, in this case 90 degrees, we know is always half the angle at the centre. And that's true here as well, isn't it? Because the angle at the centre is 180 degrees. It's just that straight line. So 90 is a half of 180 degrees. So that's the third theorem. The angle in a semicircle is a right angle. Pause the video, have a go at the questions, and I'll show the answers in a moment. Theorem number four then. You can see on the diagram here a four-sided shape, a quadrilateral. You can also see that each vertex or corner is touching the circle. That makes it what we call a cyclic quadrilateral. This example is also a quadrilateral, but you can see that not all of its vertices are touching the circle, so it's not a cyclic quadrilateral. Cyclic quadrilaterals then, they must have all the vertices touching the circumference of the circle. And the rule here is that the opposite angles will always add up to 180 degrees. So if this angle is 80 degrees, then this other one must be 100 degrees. And if this angle is 65 degrees, this other one must be 115, so that they add to 180 degrees. That's our fourth theorem then. Opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral sum to 180 degrees. Pause the video, have a go at the questions, and I'll be back in just a moment. Now we need to talk about tangents. First of all, what is a tangent? Well, a tangent is a line that just touches the circumference. It doesn't go into the circle, just touches that circumference. And there are three theorems that involve tangents. The first is that if you take a line from the center of the circle to meet the tangent at the circumference, it will always meet at a right angle. That line from the center of the circle to the circumference, we just call that the radius or radii if you're talking about more than one of them. So the rule is that the angle between a tangent and a radius is always 90 degrees. The second theorem to do with tangents is that tangents that meet at a point are equal in length. In other words, if you have two tangents like this meeting at a point, in this case point A, those two lines will always be the same length. And we can use those two facts to find the missing angles in these kinds of questions. You can see we have a quadrilateral where two of the sides are in fact tangents to the circle. And these other two lines are radii. They go from the center of the circle to the circumference. Therefore, they form a 90 degree angle where they meet those tangents. So now we know three of the four angles in the quadrilateral. And we also know that angles in a quadrilateral always add to 360 degrees. So if we subtract those three angles from 360 degrees, that will tell us what the missing angle is. And in this case, it's 130 degrees. And the final theorem to do with tangents is the alternate segment theorem, which is that the angle between a tangent and a chord is equal to the angle in the alternate segment. What on earth does that mean? Well, it just means that if you have this kind of situation, the angle created between the chord, remember that's just a line connecting two points on a circle, and the tangent, 
the highlighted angle there is equal to the angle on the other side of the chord. In other words, in the alternate segment. I always found this one really difficult to remember, but I have found it helpful to think of inside, opposite, outside. In other words, the angle inside the triangle is equal to the angle that is opposite and outside the triangle, right? So this angle is equal to this one. This angle is equal to this one. And this angle is equal to this one. Inside, opposite, outside. We call that the alternate segment theorem. Pause the video then, see if you can find the missing angles in the following questions, and I'll be back in just a moment. That's all of the theorems out of the way, but there is one thing left to cover, and that is if you have a triangle inside a circle where two of the sides are radii of the circle, as in this example. If two sides are the radii of a circle, then they must be the same length. And so you therefore have an isosceles triangle. And that could be useful to know because in an isosceles triangle, the two base angles are equal to each other. So in a question like this, we can see that we have an isosceles triangle, and therefore we know that these two angles will be equal to each other. We also know that all three angles in that triangle will sum to 180 degrees. And therefore, these two missing angles must add to 92 degrees, um, 180 minus 88. And because they're the base angles in that isosceles triangle, we know that they're going to be equal to each other. And so they must be half of 92 and half of 92 is 46. So our missing angle there is 46 degrees. As ever, here are a few questions for you to practice. I'll be back in a few seconds for my tips on how to solve circle theorem problems in an exam. My tips then. So circle theorem questions can definitely sometimes be difficult to answer. And if you're ever struggling, my advice is to stop focusing on one particular angle that you're trying to find and just ask yourself, are there any missing angles here that I can get? Um, sometimes just kind of zooming out like that, uh, shifting your focus can be enough to kind of unlock the problem and just get you moving along. If it doesn't help, then ask yourself if you can recognize any of the possible theorems in the question. Is there a way that you could apply the alternate segment theorem or the angle at the center being half the angle at the circumference? Or are there any isosceles triangles there? And so on, right? Just work through them. See if you can somehow apply any of them to your problem. Very often you'll find that you've just overlooked something. Uh, in my case, I often have a blind spot for noticing when there are isosceles triangles or where the alternate segment theorem applies, okay? So when I'm stuck, I always double check to see whether I've missed one of those. You may well have a similar blind spot. And finally, as with everything in maths, it's just practice. If you want to get good at these, you've got to do lots of them. Get used to being stuck. Get yourself stuck and then work through that process of unsticking yourself and slowly, methodically solving those problems. That is when the real learning happens, okay? So practice, practice, practice. Right, on that note, well done if you're still watching. Thank you very much indeed. Don't forget if you found this useful, it's really helpful if you can show the channel a bit of love by giving the video a thumbs up or subscribing or telling your friends or teachers or parents or leave a comment below if you have any questions or requests for future videos or even just to say hello, it is all appreciated. Thank you very much for watching and I shall see you in the next one.